hello. I just wanted to uh, do a video to give another attempt at giving a sort of introduction to the elements work that I've been um, talking about in my videos for like, you know, uh, I don't know, maybe it's almost two years now, I think, I'm not sure. Um, <coughs> but uh, just a, like more of an, an introduction so that people can maybe understand a bit better some of the background to what I'm talking about yeah um, and some of the things I've learned maybe as well over the last two years um, but um, I first got into this particular stream of work through um, a, a book by Richard Gardner who was a tarot reader and an esotericist he turned himself a metaphysician apparently um, but uh, he, it's it's a subject I got into through that and Richard had a, a particular vision of this uh, of this work uh, and he really thought almost as a kind of in a sense almost a sort of counterculture magician in a way um, but he wouldn't have described himself that way I think um, in that he was um, he really believed that uh, by um, being able to access all of the elements, all of these elemental energies, yeah, which is the classical elements of earth, fire, air, and water. By doing this, we we could transform ourselves, and we could you know, we could uh, extend our lives tremendously. He believed we could become immortal eventually. Uh, we could transform ourselves, transform our consciousness. We would be able to do miraculous things. We'd be, you know, levitating and and. Uh, and all kinds of wonderful stuff, yeah. Um, and it was all really pretty inspiring to read when I was when I was sixteen, yeah. And he is an inspiring writer and a very unusual writer because he understood very much that that airy book knowledge was was not the thing, yeah. He was asking, he was after people getting to uh, another place. In their understanding and their experience and doing it through direct experience. Now where Richard got his stuff from, where it originated in many ways, uh, was uh, uh, with uh, a man called Tama de Jong who was an artist um, uh, and he uh, was living in London and in the 1960s he and some, uh, and some some other people, so Barry Slater and Kenneth Carter, yeah, um, they all were very interested in the work of Jung, and they were interested in uh, his work on on sort of on on the elements and the four functions of uh, thinking, feeling, intuition, and sensation, and and on the sort of types that you could get, the sort of uh, the sort of typology from that in a way, though. So, uh, it, it, it's you, you have to not fall into the trap of thinking that this is all about typing people. Yeah, um, he was really in, they were really interested in that, and they made um, what they felt was a breakthrough in in uh, seeing that um, there were twelve fundamental archetypes linked to the elements and the combinations of the elements, and they arranged these as a wheel. Um, a, a wheel which was linked to uh, certainly the elements and the combinations of the elements and it was linked to the times of the year, seasons, uh, different kinds of people. Uh, essentially these were very very powerful states yeah which were natural but which were also part of on our uh, part of um, part of our nature yeah and uh, people expressed these things in different different ways and uh, you you, ex you could probably experience a number of these, yeah. Uh, you tended to experience a number of these. Um, they weren't easy things. You, it wasn't easy. It's not easy to experience all of them, yeah, um, because uh, it's like they're going in completely different directions in consciousness, yeah. Uh, so uh, you can't you can't develop them all at the same time in any case. But whereas Richard was looking towards a a, a method in a sense or a way of of living fully through all of the elements and being able to access all of the archetypes yeah 
uh, in order to live miraculously and bring about a complete transformation of the human being, yeah, and a transformation of our world essentially through that in many ways. Um, Tamo was not looking for that. Tamo was looking for a way of understanding, uh, understanding consciousness and understanding the diversity of people, of types of people psychologically. Um, and, and how they develop. Um, and one of the things that came from this is his, a kind of um, a mapping that he did of how we develop, yeah. Um, and so with the elements, you need to have put them in pairs for them to be rec humanly recognizable, really. Single elements are kind of just too, too out there, too abstract, really. But if you put them in pairs, you start to get something that looks um, that actually looks kind of human and could be recognized uh, in part as personalities yeah. though no person no person is a single archetype or in fact is made up of archetypes uh, everybody has access to all of the elemental energies in various ways but not equally so yeah um, so what Tamo saw was that we have a kind of, I don't know what you want to call it, a kind of, a, it's almost like a sort of blueprint that we end up with, yeah, um, in terms of our elemental makeup, yeah, um, you know, which is our tendency, yeah. And this was a very interesting, a very interesting idea. Um, it's not easy uh, or simple to see what a person's elemental makeup is or what their elemental tendencies are. It has to be approached with sensitivity and receptivity and with a kind of lateral thinking to actually like mull over this over time with a person to see where they are actually coming from. Yeah. Um, uh, but the interesting thing uh, with this uh, was that uh, it seems as if from Tamo's perspective, um, we start off in childhood in a largely, in a way, in a largely undifferentiated state in as much as it's just us, a child in general will just be whatever they are. It's not, it's no big ideas about what I am really in general. Um, and that state will be characterized by a particular elemental combination. Yeah, so I say fire and air, air and water, earth and water, earth and fire, etc., etc. And each of these is associated with an archetype and that archetype colors um, the experience of that small being at that point in their life, yeah. And then when we get to adolescence, when we get to the point where we're starting to actually um, sort of break through and do work on, on almost in our own way making an identity of our own, which is what we tend to do during adolescence and what we tend to do as we, as we approach adult life, yeah. Um, um, and this, Tamo thought, would be made up of the, uh, would, would call upon the elements which we didn't call upon during childhood. So it's a sort of like, it's almost like a sort of a bit of an opposition. It's a, it's, it's a separation. Um, uh, because we need to move from that rather undifferentiated state into a more self-conscious state to be able to live that way as, as, as a self-conscious identity. And so, uh, then, for instance, if you are water and air uh, during your childhood state, yeah, which would be just what you were, you'd probably be in, 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 in your adolescence, what would start to emerge would probably be something which called more upon the fire and earth elements uh, in whichever combination and whichever order. It was a very interesting idea. Now, of course, this doesn't just end there, yeah, uh, because um, uh, a person has all sorts of things to get through in life and, uh, and they do have to call upon the elements in different ways and having the elements in these different positions in yourself um, puts them in, 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 in kind of different circumstances so you, you may have find it difficult to contact water or fire or earth or what have you you may habitually call far more upon say air or 
or, or, or water or earth, whatever it is, yeah? And there are different combinations which Tamo came up with to say, look, you put these two, two elements together, that's your personal self. Put these two together, that's more like your essential self that you had in childhood, yeah? Um, uh, you put another set together, that's more of a shadow self, what you tend to, to not be aware of or you or tend to deny in yourself, etc., etc., yeah? But it's an interesting scheme. Um, and uh, I mean, what I didn't mention, of course, is as you move into your, your more adolescent self, um, you tend to become distanced from the childhood state. And the childhood state tends to sink into subconsciousness to various degrees. Um, doesn't mean that, like, uh, you know, any of these things are absolute. There are many variations to it. Uh, but I think it's a really, really interesting way of, of, of looking at things. But the essential thing with the way that Tamo looked upon it was that, I think, anyway, was that one, you're talking about people and relationships and different kinds of people and how they function because there are fundamentally different kinds of people. They see things in different ways. They function in different ways. Yeah. Um, they, in a sense, live in different worlds, um, subjectively speaking. Yeah. Um, so he really saw this. Yeah. And he wanted to explore it. But the other thing is that what Tamo is drawing in his perspective in his way of saying things is a process of development is a process of psychological development which goes on through life l leading you towards greater maturity yeah and um, and greater wholeness effectively and greater fulfillment yeah and so that is a lot of what um, I think Tamo was was after he was looking to that yeah um, so it, it's a it's a view of things uh, which I was led to via Richard Gardner. I love Richard Gardner's work. I think there's still a lot to be found in his work. Um, there's a, a quality to Richard Gardner's work which is uh, not really found anywhere else. He was a, he was an extraordinary person. Yeah. Um, but Tamo's Tamo's work uh, seems potentially very very useful to me. Um, it's looking at at the different kinds of people and, and and how they really function. And it doesn't underestimate um, the magnitude of the job of experiencing states which are quite unlike your own, yeah, and, 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 and what that takes you through, yeah. Uh, so, whereas um, Richard, I think, achieved a great deal in himself and he achieved a great deal in his writing, yeah, um, but you get that impression of anything's possible, which is a great way to approach things, yeah, at a certain point. But it's not literally true in terms of uh, a human life lived, because everything takes time, and it takes experience, it takes work, yeah, and there is only so much work a human being can do in one life yeah now don't limit yourself but the fact is there is only so much work you can do yeah um, and it's important I think to find out what is the inherent work that kind of unfolds from yourself because that's what's going to fulfill you and that's what's going to kind of complete you and that's what's going to take you where you really need to go um, and so uh, I do like Tamo's approach in that sense yeah and uh, I will give a list in the description to this video um, of some of the uh, of, of, of what I know of Tamo's books which are still available okay that's all for today uh, I hope that was useful and uh, I'll see you soon bye